Hi. So today I'm going to be doing some uh, photography work. I have uh, some film to develop that I've been putting off for a real long time now. Uh, so what I'm working with here, this is a 1913, 1912 or 1913 Kodak Primo No. 9 uh, 5x7 large format camera. This is the film holders for it. And I'm going to be uh, showing the process of developing the shots. So I have two exposed plates, two exposed films. This is back from, I traveled down to South Carolina for the uh, eclipse, to see the eclipse. And I loaded a bunch of film. I brought uh, 12, 12 shots with me. I wound up only taking two because I was so caught up in the spectacle of it all that I, I ignored this, this camera and I focused on my, uh, my three main cameras that I had with me. But finally I'm going to develop the film. So. <clears throat> First thing, while you're shooting with this camera, I might I might do a video later on of actually shooting with this camera. I always take notes of everything that that I'm shooting, what 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 the conditions are like, what my uh, my meter was, uh, what my meter came up with, what I shot with. I, I keep all that written down so that I know how to develop and how it came out in in the end, so I know how to correct myself for later on. So. Frame one, it was partly cloudy. Uh, this was from Columbia, South Carolina on August 21st. Uh, it's just of the crowd gathered. I shot at F-16 at a 50, 1 50th of a second. Uh, number two, shot two, was the same of the crowd gathered. It was uh, mostly sunny then, so F-32 at the same 50th of a second. So let me take, let me show you what's involved with the, the basics of all of this. So the film, I'm using Ilford uh, HP5 Plus 400 ASA black and white film. This is uh, 5x7. I'm really glad that B&H ca still carries 5x7. It's uh, really hard. You can get um, 4x6 and 8x10 real easy. 5x7, very hard to find, at least in the United States. I think it's more popular in England. So the film itself, there's a couple test shots here that I made a long time ago. That looks terrible. My first tries at using this camera were just awful, <laughs> as you would expect. But they, there's the size of the picture. That's the size of the, the film. And I can't find... Well, this is one... Well, yeah, this is the one I don't mind scratching up or anything. So what you need to do to, to use this thing, you take one of your holders, and you need to do this in a dark bag. You'll see me take it out later in the dark bag. Uh, you have to open it up, open the bottom here. And when, you, when, you, when you're in the dark bag, you need to find which side is the emulsion side. So the emulsion goes out to the photograph. So you have these couple little notches on, on one side of the film here. So that's, that's where the um, uh, that that can help you determine which side has the emulsion. If you, if I, I don't think I, yeah, I could get it on camera. This side's a little bit more matte. This side's a little bit more shiny. This is not the emulsion side. The matte side is the emulsion side. That's the gelatin side. So, I always have it where I could feel right down in there. And you have to slide it up into there, close it up and put your dark slide back. The other dark slides that I have are a little bit easier. I don't think these, yeah, these don't have bumps on them to help you uh, know which side is which, but most of the time I don't take the dark slide all the way out when I'm in the bag. Because I, I, when once you expose, you put your dark slide back with the dark facing out. That's what, or you could do, do either way, but that's what I do. The dark facing out means that this has been exposed. The light facing out means that this is still a fresh sheet of film, if there is film in here. You have to keep, try to keep track of which ones have film, which ones don't have film. 
But then in the in the dark bag, I'll open it up, flip that open, and get the film out of here. You have to do this all by touch because you're in complete darkness. That's what I have. I have two two shots, two exposures in this film holder. Let's take a look at what these look like too. So I can't find my light table. I have no idea what I do with my light table, but I could use one of my laptops here. I have this. Uh, Thank you. I have this uh, pixel checking program here where I could just turn the screen all white nice and easy. So, this is just of my backyard, my greenhouse, and the pine tree. And it's kind of blown out on the camera. I've uh, just done a bunch of test stuff mostly. I have one that I actually like. It comes out great as a as a print. Let me get it out. This is from Liberty State Park in New Jersey, looking at the New York skyline. That's uh, an American flag over the uh, Freedom Tower. And there's some cool uh, contrails through the sky and everything. It, it comes out nice when you uh, fully develop it. Let's get into development. So this is what's going to go on inside of the dark bag that you're not going to be able to see. So I have my exposed film and I have my drum. I'm going to be using a daylight processing drum. They're actually supposed to be, they were made and designed for de developing color prints because uh, color prints need to be developed in complete darkness, not like uh, black and white where you could have safe lights on. So uh, first things first, wash your hands. You can't have any or as little as possible uh, oils on your fingers. Always use hot water to get rid of oils. And if you have equipment in here, make sure you rinse it off. You don't want any of your soap getting in your chemicals. So I just got soap all over my funnels. We'll be doing this again. Now, I would put my hands in the dark bag, and I'm going to feel for this, that, know where everything is. Slide open. Normally, when I put it down to, I would know which, which number I'm on. Doesn't really matter, though. Slide it open. This is a film that I ruined once before. Open it up, and then there's this cutout here. Helps you get a fingernail underneath it. You could slide it right out. Then you don't have much space inside the bag, so it's kind of difficult. And you take your drum here, you push down on the nozzle, pop the drum open. Now, if you take a look at this, I have this these marks on here. That's undeveloped film, undeveloped emulsion in a certain area. What happened with this one, I put it in backwards. You need to have the emulsion outside, you can, if, or facing inside of the drum. When you put it in there,
you have these these guide tracks. I don't know if this is coming up on. There's some guide tracks in here. You just put your exposure in right there with the emulsion facing out so that the chemical washes over it. it the chemicals will get between it too. That's why this got mostly developed. But right where it had the most pressure up against the uh, outside of the drum is where it did not get developed. No, no developer ever got in there. So that's, that's what's going to happen inside the dark bag. And this drum will fit up to four of these 5x7 exposures. And there's spacers in there and everything to make sure that they all stay separate and away from each other. Right, let me get the dark bag out and we'll do the actual film. So here's my dark bag. So I'm going to take my film. Put all the way inside. Take my drum. Zipper one bag. This is a. They're double bags. There's two two bags. One a nylon type and one a cotton type. Opposing zippers on each bag. And now, I do trust my dark bag. It is getting kind of old, but I, I have taken this is from high school, and I have taken well, very good care of it. So. It's, uh, I, I, don't, I don't see any light leaks in it whenever I stick my head in there. But in any event, I'm going to dim the lights. And then I'm going to wash my hands. Some people use gloves in here. I... I can't feel anything. Even with the uh, film handling cotton gloves, I don't see how you can really use them and be able to find the corners and pull up the center and all that. I, I, I can't do it. So I just make sure I wash my hands every single time so I don't get any fingerprints on anything. First thing I want to do is open the drum. The drum is open. I'm going to pull the slide, flip the bottom down, take my first piece of film out. I'm trying to get my fingernail underneath it. There you go. Holding it with the emulsion side into the drum. Feel inside the drum for where I am. And load the negative. That clicking that you hear, that's me sliding it up and down, making sure that it's on the stops. And that one's in. Now flip the carrier over, take out the next one. fingernail under it, slide it out, and this one's going on the other side opposed to that, okay, it is in, it's up against the backstop, the, pushing it in, now I'm going to put the cover back on, find the peg, there's a peg on the bottom of the, the drum, so I could locate the cover, the cover only goes on 
one clocking direction. The cover is on straight, we are good. Turn the lights back on, and we can open it up. There's my film in my drum. I give it one last push, make sure I got it fully closed. There's my film holder. So now for developing. Okay, so first things first, I'm out of developer, so I'm going to be mixing up some new developer. And uh, what I did earlier in the day was uh, I came down here and ev everything was cold in the basement. So I made up a water bath. I filled up this side of the sink with um, something like 80 something degree water. And I put, I have a little, um, I don't know if that can be seen on, on camera or not, but I have a little circulating pump that's circulating the water around the bottles. So all the bottles are sitting in here and water is just circulating around, keeping the bottles, uh, get, getting the bottles a little, a little bit warmer. So right now the temperature is 78, 79 degrees in the bath, so that, that gives us, uh, uh, that'll warm up our chemicals for us, so then we, we know what to use, what times to use when we develop. But I'm out of developer, so I'm going to mix up some new developer. I'm going to switch over to this uh, potato cam over my sink. And it's low resolution, it's only 640 by 480. So. I have my data tainer for my developer. I have my new bottle of developer. I have what's been sitting in the bath, so I brought it up to temperature. And I need some water. I'm going to need water of the same temperature. So I want about 75 degree water. So I'm going to get the water running over here. What you want to do with this too is uh, get your hot, get both of your waters running for a while before you start this. Uh, so that the temperature stays constant once you try to set it here. So I take my thermometer. I want about 75. A little too hot there. I'm at 80. Coming down. It's about 76, 75. So now I'm going to empty out this container and let that fill up with what should be 75 degree water. Going down to 74. Change the water. And I'll let that fill up. Now, take my funnel, add my concentrate Tmax developer. rinse out the bottle. There's my Kodak T-Max, Kodak Professional T-Max developer. Let's see what the water is. Water 75 exactly. Add that to it. Temperature, 75 exactly. And then we'll stop it off. No, that's three quarts. One more.
That's it. I'll leave that for Shake this up a little bit. Now we can get to developing. So this drum um, takes six ounces of fluid. So we're going to measure out six ounces. It depends on what, what you're developing, but I always like using the maximum amount. I reclaim all of my chemicals anyway. I don't just dump them down once, once uh, you use them once. The developer I use only twice if I'm developing a lot. Measure out six ounces of developer. Now we're at 75 degrees for the developer. Double check that. So at 75 degrees, um, temperature is not very important with uh, black and white. It's extremely important with color. But uh, black and white, it's uh, you have a lot of leeway with it. So 75 is the max that we should be developing in, and it's six minutes to develop. So let's make sure you're at 70, yeah, 75 exactly. So six minutes, I'm going to put six minutes on the clock. Six minutes, and we're going to pour the developer right into the loading nozzle right here. And now this has, this does not touch the film yet. This loads a little trough that's inside of this. So it's, it's when you have it straight and level, all of that fluid is just sitting there in that trough right now. So you could make sure you have it all drained in, clean up anything you need to clean up. And then as soon as I start the timer, when this tips over, it'll dump all the chemical on it and start the developing process. So we're set at six minutes. The, motor base is on, it's on reversing so it's going to go forward and back and I apologize for the loud clicking this this old technology has uh, sparking contacts every time it goes from one direction to the other and it creates a pop on the microphone so there we go the trays here are because these ends like to leak sometimes. See my main camera has stopped. See, I can't get my main camera to work. That one's working. That one's working. That one's working. My main camera has stopped working. And that's great. I 
wasn't paying attention to the drum, and it fell over, which I lost some fluid out of, so now I need to add some more fluid. Okay, this is annoying. Okay. Technical difficulties. Please stand by. My main camera keeps freezing up. You know what I think is happening? The, the interference that this is causing that you hear on the microphone is causing the camera to flip out. Uh, we're down to one minute. I make sure I have the right temperature of water sitting in here. 76, 77, that's fine. I'm gonna measure out. I always use a little bit more water than you would chemicals. Put a bunch of water. And I'll get the jug ready to put the developer into. I have a jug that I put the used T-Max developer into. So that's ready to receive the used T-Max. And there we go. Jump out the developer. the water wash. So I have 300 milliliters of proper temperature clean water. We're just going to do this for one minute. One minute on the clock and start.
was a gun. Now we should have an image on the film. Now we need to keep it from going bad, so we put the fixer in. This is Kodak Rapid Fixer with hardener, solution A and B. Now we fix for four minutes. You know, the video's jumping when it clicks. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna, I could switch this so that it doesn't do that. The drum's just gonna roll in one direction. Now <laughs> the camera's not even coming on. A little bit of EMI interference, what it does. You have to pay attention to your drum because it will roll over and fall off sometimes. There's a little adjustment on the motor base so that you can get it to balance and you could put big rubber bands on the drum I just pay attention to it. And that's really the end of the actual chemical process. The film is fixed, it's developed, but now I do two extra steps that a lot of people don't do. I'm going to water wash it first. For one minute. I'm going to use two extra chemicals that some people say you don't need. A lot of people argue that it's completely useless, but I don't care. I like going through the process of it anyway. And the first one is some Ico Permawash. Permawash washes off all traces of any chemicals. It's a, basically a film soap. I'm going to overdo it with the permawash. I'm not using six ounces, I'm using 300 milliliters, 10 ounces.
a lot of people say you don't need perma wash on anything except fibrous uh, paper. That none of the other stuff absorbs anything, so there's no reason to ever use perma wash. I don't care. It makes me feel good that it's been washed and it's clean and there's no other chemicals on it. So I dump the perma wash in. The perma wash only goes for a minute. The very last step I take is something called PhotoFlow 200. And this PhotoFlow 200 just prevents water spots. And with the PhotoFlow, I do two things with the PhotoFlow. I'm going to fill up this tray. This tray is nice and dry. This side didn't leak amazingly. I'm going to fill up this tray with PhotoFlow. I'm going to put PhotoFlow in here first. First a water wash. Okay, water's in there. One minute water wash. And we have the photo flow solution. So photo flow prevents water spots. It's something like uh, Rain-X for your photos for your uh, negatives anyway. So let me fill up that. I'm gonna fill up this tray with some photo flow as well. And when the negatives come out of the tube, they're going to go in the photo flow before they go to dry. Photo flow. One minute. I'll wash my hands good because I don't want any other chemicals that I would have had on me to get on the negatives. Now we open up our tube. So take a look at what I actually got. So the best I can tell is that I overexposed when I shot these, which is disappointing that I only took two uh, images and I overexposed both of them in the exact same way. I need to go back and really look at how I exposed them and what the settings were and everything. Uh, let's take a look at this. I don't know how well this is going to show up at all. Wow, that's so dark on this. You can see image. You can't see image. There's no way you're going to see anything on that. But when I look at it in the fluorescent lights, I can see that there's a very light density image in there. And that, that's just my fault for, for how I exposed. Either that or it could be just how long I let them sit before I develop them. 
that. You can't see that. Well, I'm still learning on this. I've only had a couple uh, really good, successful images. I showed you the one from uh, from Liberty State Park. So it's it's just a learning game with this camera. It I haven't used it enough. The film is amazingly expensive. Uh, I think it's like two dollars a sheet each time I each time I take a picture. That's two dollars plus chemical cost and all that. So I I don't use it that often. But I I should just suck it up and go ahead and go out with a a bunch of film. Just go get two two boxes from B and H and just go shoot. And, and try, you know, bracketing, go go up and down with my exposures and everything, and just play around with it until I get a good feel. Because the 35 and my Nikon and stuff like that, I've, I've taken so many images with them that I just know what it's going to look like. I have an old Nikon F, the, the original, and I just know what what to set it to just because I know what it's going to look like. I, I, I know how to meter it myself. I don't, have, I don't need a... You know, fancy, it just has that single little, uh, that little swinging meter on it, and then you just have to try to get it in the center. But once you get used to the camera so well, you, you don't really get it in the center. You, you, know, you know how to weight your own images for how it's going to look. This camera, I have no idea how to do that yet. I've taken so few images with it that I have no idea. How to meter for it yet. I, I rely on my my uh Minolta spot meter to, to try to tell me, but I I have no idea if the settings on this correspond to anything that we would know these days anyway. Is one sixtieth of well the timer-wise, is 1 60th of a second actually 1 60th of a second? This thing can't be exactly correct. I, I should uh, make an Arduino project to, to measure the exact amount of that the shutter's opening and closing so I could see how, how close to calibration that is. And then the f-stop, too. Is, is, 16, is f-16 the same as today's f-16? Does, you know... F F32, if I put this on F32, is that the same that my meter knows that's F32? I have the, the Minolta Autometer 4 or 6. Which one is this? IV, I think that's 4. Minolta Autometer 4. This helps me meter my shots. I have the viewfinder for it. So when you know, this is this is an incident meter for, if I'm going to take a picture right here, I can measure the, the light right here. So you add this attachment to it. And now I can meter from a distance. So I can meter at something, I can meter at something that I'm looking at. So I could be far away from the scene, and I can meter it and see what it's going to take to shoot it. And that's what I've been using with, with this, but obviously I got something wrong down there in uh, South Carolina. I'm glad I didn't get everything wrong, because I, I did get some amazing images on my digital, and I still have a roll of 35mm black and white to uh, develop, too. And I got a cool video. I set up a, a another camera just to take video of the crowd and myself and the reaction that everybody had to it, and the video came out good. And the digital images came out good. And unfortunately, this this was a bust. I also have some medium for, uh, format in this uh, old Kodak Duoflex. I think I took a couple shots with this. I don't I don't see the number on here. I have to advance a whole frame because I went past the number. So I need to take a picture and then advance a whole frame to be able to see what number I'm on. Yeah, I, I still need to develop the film. I need to finish the film on this and then develop the film on this. Let's see what, what comes out of it. But the trip itself was great. This this was disappointing that the two uh, images I took with this were far overexposed. 
Oh well. Keep learning. Catch you guys next time.